25 Jim Bigley. Discussion of roadside management program and previous questions. <coughs> I'll try to speak loud enough to reach everybody. If you don't, like, let me know. Good morning. I appreciate the chance. You've seen me quite a few times and you've been patient with me, and I appreciate that. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I'd like to make a public apology to the supervisor, Mark Beck. Um, at last week's board meeting, I read an email from Corey Meyer to me, wherein Corey stated that Mr. Beck walked out of an advisory committee meeting before it was over. After the board meeting, I was informed by Shirley Bermace that Mr. Vick did not walk out during Corey's presentation, but did not stay for discussion. It may be that Corey considered discussion to be part of the meeting. Regardless, Mr. Vick stayed until the presentation was over. And do I have that right? Okay. Okay. And yeah, the meeting was over, so I thought. Yeah, right. Well, and so did I. So did other people too. So okay. did. Well, my apology, Mr. Vick. Uh, thank you. No problem. All right, now to the subject I'm scheduled for, whether the uh, Winnesheek County Integrated Roadside Vegetation Program should be continued. For those who don't know, what is an integrated roadside vegetation management? Where does the idea come from? The idea of using native plants in roadside management came to the attention of the Iowa legislature from at least three sources, the Iowa Department of Transportation, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, and the University of Northern Iowa biology professor, Dr. Darrell Smith. The biology department at UNI and others formed an organization now called the Tall Grass Prairie Center. The center, established in 1988, has developed a program to integrate native plant communities into the management of Iowa roadsides. The idea caught on across the state, and counties being responsible for maintenance of secondary roads began applying management practices using native plants. Native plants are deep-rooted, long-lived, and well-adapted to the soils, climate, and other features of Iowa. Eventually, after much research and experimenting with support from the Iowa Department of Transportation and the Department of Natural Resources, the Iowa legislature incorporated the ideas and practices of integrated roadside management into Iowa law. Now, I'll be referring to two parts of the chapter 314 that Andy and I briefly discussed earlier. And I've got copies of those statutes in the paper I handed out this morning. Section 314.22 directs the Iowa Department of Transportation to provide an integrated roadside vegetation management plan designed to accomplish the goals set out in that section. The goals are listed there, as are the objectives. I encourage you to read the highlighted parts of Code Sections 314.21 and 22 because they provide guidance to counties in designing their own integrated vegetation programs. Importantly, Section 22 provides that counties may adopt such a plan. So that section requires the state those that, to have the integrated roadside program. They're required to do it. And then secondary roads, it's been optional, at least the way I read it. Um, in uh, 2015 and 16, the Win Winnesheet County adopted resolutions to establish an integrated roadside vegetation program, hire a manager, establish duties of the manager, and implement the program. Winnesheet County Integrated Roadside Vegetation Management Plan was adopted March 28, 2016. It incorporates the job description of a full-time roadside manager. On April 1, 2019, Winnesheet County, by ordinance, established regulations regarding right-of-way maintenance on Winnesheet County secondary roads. 
In doing so, it adopted Iowa Code Section 314.22, and then a subpart of that is 2. Making the county's plan consistent with the Integrated Roadside Vegetation Management Plan adopted by the Department of Transportation. So, the objectives and goals set out in Iowa Code Section 314.22 apply to the Winnesheek County Plan. So I think it'd be a misnomer to call to say the county has an integrated roadside vegetation plan if it doesn't meet the, the specific, specific set out in there. Uh, so maybe labels, there could be issues over that, but I'll leave it to uh, Andy Vandermont and to you know, advise you on that issue. Uh, Corey Meyer was hired to manage the Winnesee program and from all reports, from people in the best position to judge his work, he was well informed with great knowledge and understanding of his work. He has the skills and knowledge to be not just a typical roadside manager, his, he is respected throughout Iowa and beyond. He developed several seed plots containing plants that were specialized for varying conditions of soils in Winnesee County. There are three different, as I understand it. I've just tried to look it up, and I think the three different plots having different seed mixes, and so he could tailor that to certain areas. I know these limestone ditches we have sometimes wouldn't be the same as other highly organic ditches. So anyway, uh, he developed these plants. Uh, he has people, <coughs> Corey has people skills, work ethic, organizational skills, mechanical skills, and takes great pride in the work that he's done for Winnesheek County. He was building a roadside program many have described as in the top 10 in the state of Iowa. I don't want to overlook Todd Hill, assistant roadside manager for Winnesheek County, who contributed greatly to this program. From what I hear, Todd and Corey were a great team. Corey says, quote, we worked our butts off to create a program that was arguably one of the top 10 in the state of Iowa. Then on February 6, 23, about two and a half months ago, at a regular meeting of the Winnesheet County Board of Supervisors, Corey met with the board to give a program update. To his surprise, minutes of the meeting reflect, quote, moved by Vic, seconded by Kelsey, to terminate the roadside management program due to funding concerns, effective immediately. Motion carried with Vic, Kelsey, and Landrick voting aye, Bernays and Paulette voting no, nay. At the next board meeting, County Attorney Andy Vandermont expressed concern about the action taken at the last meeting and suggested corrective action then it was moved by Vic, seconded by Kelsey, to rescind the action taken on February 6th. Motion carried. Then it was moved by Vic, seconded by Kelsey, to direct the county engineer to suspend incurring any expenses other than wages and benefits for the roadside management program, except as required by law, until receiving further notice from the Board of Supervisors following the budget hearing. That would be today's budget hearing. The motion passed with affirmative votes from Vic, Kelsey, and Langer. In a letter to the Board of Supervisors dated February 27, 2003, Winnesheet County Engineer Lee Yerke told the board the roadside program was accomplishing the goals previous boards had set to, had set to achieve and, quote, is showing budgetary gains already, close quote. The county engineer and roadside manager for Pottawatomie County, Iowa, in a letter to the Winnesheek County, expressed that their integrated roadside management program provides, quote, a higher quality solution at a lower cost, since much of our equipment and seat costs are covered by grants. Jones County engineer provided data showing significant overall savings since adoption of the program. Roadside biologist for Dallas County, Iowa, wrote a two-page letter 
providing detailed benefits to their county, including how early detection and control of invasive species saves his county money. He explains how having many eyes on the roadside detects erosion and other potential problems and saves costs. Fayette County engineer Joel Fance expressed similar benefits and notes the advantage of having roadside work, quote, in-house, keep the taxpayers' money in the county. He estimates that the county's cost for in-house roadside management is one half the cost of having it done by contractors. The packet of information provided to you today has copies of the engineers and roadside managers' reports and the letters, including the report of Lee Berkey, Winnesheek County Engineer. Winnesheek County Integrated Roadside Vegetation Management Program has been criticized as taking money away from gravel and using it to plant flowers in the ditches. This type of statement is uninformed to say the least. A major part, if not most funds for the Integrated Vegetation Program come from other sources, not the county. The sources including the in Living Roadway Trust Fund that was created in the same chapter, I might point out, to in, in, incentivize counties to start and maintain the integrated vegetation program. <clears throat> the last page of the packet I provided to you is a spreadsheet showing a partial list of equipment. It shows that most of the purchase price came from grants. Most of the purchased seed is free, either from the Living Roadway Trust Fund or other groups, or raised in seed plots that were started by Corey Meyer. And, as expected, Winnesheek County itself provides significant dollars to the program. As to Winnesheek County's cost, that should be viewed as an investment, not an expense. Native plant communities are not an annual crop that has to be reseeded every year. Native plant communities are meant to be here. They're self-sustaining. They're not only as the native, as not only as native plants, but also insect communities, including pollinators necessary for farm crops, for birds and, uh, and the entire communities of plants and animals. Native plant communities will serve residents of Winnesheet County indefinitely into the future. It's an investment we can't afford to lose. To the Board of Supervisors, I request that you budget for the roadside program for the coming year, the same amount as last year, with the expectation of hiring a roadside manager as soon as possible. Number two, to you in the audience, after the budget hearing, I plan to stay around. If any of you are interested, I have pictures of the of much of the equipment and facilities of the Winnesheek County Roadside. I also have a spreadsheet that itemizes most of the equipment and shows the source of funding to acquire it. Please read and circulate the packet of materials. I, it doesn't matter whether the recipient of those materials is supportive or opposes the roadside program. It is, it is important that everyone will benefit from having background information. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.